Last year we had multiple line rockets that were scripted and they were coming in from the side of the field, timed to fuel mines. Now we use this one here to set off our finale, but we also had three others during the show. And rather than spending the time and hassle of running multiple cables for each individual rocket, we came up with a contraption to run all four rockets on the same cable. Now it consisted of a tower that supported the cable, but also had drop away blast shields between each one of the rockets. But it all started with this sketch on a whiteboard in the shop. Now the plan was we'll put a big stake in the ground at one end, a tower to launch the rockets from, the cable will be staked on the other side of the tower into the ground, and we'll have some sort of block to raise the cable up off the ground and to control the final position of the rockets. Now I bought a 500 foot reel of 332nd or 2 millimeter galvanized cable and I didn't use all of it but that was actually cheaper than buying a cut section. I used some 1 16th inch wire rope clips and pounded a heavy 2x2 two two stake into the ground that I can anchor it at. I just used a scrap piece of wood as a block to raise the cable up off the ground that will also be used as a stopping point near where the fuel mines will be set up. The tower had a hole through the post that we ran the cable through, and then the cable had another loop at the end and a ratchet strap going to another 2x2 two two stake that we used to anchor the cable and to pull tension on the cable. And it turns out from the stopping block to the tower it was about 200 feet. Okay, this cable was going to have four rockets on it, we needed to provide some sort of barrier between the rockets that would prevent the first rocket from damaging or prematurely igniting the rockets behind it. The idea was a metal blast plate with a slot cut down it for the cable. The plate would hang from the tower by a fuse attached to the plate the rocket in front of it would light the fuse, and as the fuse burned, the plate would drop out of the way, clearing the path for the next rocket. I wouldn't give our tower any craftsmanship awards, and it was kind of a build-as-you-go type approach, and there were some lessons learned. I had some 8-inch by 12-inch pieces of flashing left over from a treehouse project that I cut slots in, and initially we just used 3M aluminum foil tape to tape the fuse onto the surface of the plate. However, we found that with the heat through the day and the weight, the fuse would start to slip through the tape. The solution was drilling two holes through the blast shield and then tying a knot at the end of the visco. I would feed the fuse through one hole and then cover up the knot with aluminum tape, then provide a loop on the back side and feed it back through on the other side. Then I could leave as much fuse as I needed to give me a time delay and I would cover it up with tape, but then leave the end exposed right where the nozzle of the driver on the line rocket would be. The other thing we found out in testing is that these blast shields, if just supported by a simple hook up above, as shown here, would twist in the wind. So we measured out the distance between each one of the shields and cut slots in another board that we attached to the tower such that it would restrain the blast shields from twisting in the wind. Now this picture doesn't show everything finished, but we had all of the wires from the igniters to the rockets going up and around that slotted board and across the top of the tower. We kept the electrical wires out of the way from any blasts of the rocket drivers. We had a rail from the firing system attached to the back side of the tower that all the igniters were plugged into. These line rockets consisted of a large driver, which is the middle tube, a whistle, which is the lower tube, and then a split tube on the top that you can put over the cable. As you can see in this picture here, there is no igniter attached. The igniter was just taped onto the fuse coming out of the driver and would continually fall off. So that's something that we had to check and we made sure that they were more firmly attached, but yet wouldn't tether the rocket down when it took off. The other thing you can see in this picture is that the rocket is coming separated from the split tube that is essentially the trolley on the cable. 
When we did the testing, it was 108 degrees Fahrenheit and the glue was essentially melting. So the quick solution was to bust out the baling wire. So every line rocket that we've launched has two wraps of baling wire around it, twisted down tight and then cut trim. This here is the testing we did the week prior. Simulation commencing T minus four seconds. Please evacuate all non-essential personnel immediately. When we did the actual testing on all four line rockets, we set up cameras on either end of the run so we could capture any issues. Also, we were using this to time the four rockets so that we could properly program both the delay and the duration in the script for our show. Not only were we timing the rocket, but we were also timing how long it took for the fuse to burn and for the blast shield to drop. And overall, the test worked great. And the blast shields all dropped out of the way, and we were able to fire each rocket without any issues. That was quite a relief. And here's the last rocket. Now I took all four videos and put them in my video editor and with the waveform, you can see these spikes on each four of the recordings. That's the igniter popping. And you can see I have some different delays until when the rocket actually starts. This is the whistle. And then these spikes here, this is the sound of the rocket hitting the board at the end of the run. So knowing that this is 29 frames per second, I could line up all of the igniters popping and make note of the time. And then I can measure both the delay to when the rocket runs and to when it hits the board. And I used this and came up with a average time that I used within the script. Here's all the data in a spreadsheet. I'm not gonna go through this in detail, but you can see I have data for rocket one, two, three, and four and I recorded the time, including frame, for when the igniter goes off, the delay, and when it hits the board. And from that, I could calculate an average of a 0.25 seconds for a delay and a duration of 3.9 seconds. And that's what I used in my script. And as a sanity check, I could play back the video of all four at the same time. Well, that's a wrap for this video. I hope you found it interesting and hopefully helpful. I'll leave you with a slow motion playback. And if you wanna see how all four of these line rockets turned out, I'll leave a link in the description to our pyro musical show titled Play With Fire. I really enjoyed setting up these line rockets and working through this. I hope you get a chance to try some new things. And if you do, have fun and be safe.